but will attract the loss to the saving knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ and that will help the weak and the feeble Lord to be strengthened and that will encourage the strong to continue in serving you I pray Lord as we do all of these things give us a servant's heart that make us Lord understand that we are here to minister to each other that we should not think of ourselves as entitled to be served by other people but you have given us Lord the liberty to be a servant to serve you Lord to reach the loss and to serve each other Lord here in the local church I pray Lord that you will help us do this so that Lord will be able to obey your commandments we can follow your example and that will be able, O oh God, to glorify your name. Lord, today, even as I preach, Lord, please help me to say the right words that your people may be encouraged, exhorted, rebuked, if need be, O oh God, even as myself, so that, Lord, we can always see your desire and will for our lives. And that is, Lord, we'll be able to do it so that, Lord, we will become a better Christian and we will be molded according, Lord, to your will. Bless us, Lord, today. May you be glorified and lifted up in our midst. And I pray all these things in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. You may be seated. Thank you very much. So we're going to study today about the demeanor of a servant. The demeanor of a servant. So we will uh, study this by looking at Philippians chapter 2, uh, not, uh, not actually the whole chapter, but uh, maybe half of the chapter, and we will look at the, uh, uh, the attitude or the demeanor of a servant. Because in our time, uh, if you're going to look at it, there's so many things about leadership, but there are not so many uh, you know, conferences or discussion about being a servant. We are naturally drawn to the spotlight instead of working under the radar. Because for us, there is no glamour in it. And if there is no glamour in it, then we do not want to actually associate ourselves in those things. But the Bible is very clear that what the Lord needs are servants. As servant, then you will be able to lead properly because a servant will understand how it is to lead people in serving the Lord. So that is the reason why our greatest example when it comes to servanthood is the Lord Jesus Christ. The Lord Jesus Christ said that he did not come to be ministered unto, but to minister and to give his life a ransom for many. In our text, in verses 3 and 4, we can see uh, that uh, the Bible says, Let nothing be done through strife or vain glory. But in lowliness of mind, let each esteem other better than themselves. Something that we are not naturally drawn to do. We usually want to esteem ourselves better than other people. That is why we are fond of comparing ourselves to people that are lesser than we are. And we avoid comparing ourselves to people that may be better than us. Because we want to look better than other people. But the Bible is very clear that we have to esteem others better than we are. Look not every man on his own things, but every man also on the things of others. So the word vainglory is translated from a Greek word which means empty glorying and self-conceit. It means empty pride or empty glory and it is descriptive of vain and hollow parade and show the idea seems to be that of a mere self-esteem a mere desire to honor ourselves to attract attention to win praise to make ourselves uppermost or foremost or to be the main attraction so that is what it means by vainglory and vainglory if you will notice is the way of the word that is why in the word it is how to be on top it is how to get ahead 
of other people. It is how to be number one. Actually, there is a saying in the world that nobody remembers number two. They always remember number one. They will not remember the runner-up in the Miss Universe, but they will only remember the Miss Universe. They may not remember the runner-up in the World Series. They will only remember the champion. So that is the way of the world. And that is the desire of men today. Actually, during the time of the Lord Jesus Christ, this uh, uh, attitude was exemplified by the Pharisees. Wherein these Pharisees are going to stand in public places and pray for three, four, five, or even six hours. And when they are fasting, they're going to put on a uh, sad face or a weak uh, uh, countenance so that people will know that they are fasting. And if they are giving, then they're going to see to it that the world will see how much they are giving. So that is uh, the attitude of so many people today in the world. But sadly, this attitude can also be found inside the church and sadly among the servant, the so-called servants of the Lord. But what I want us to see today is that there is a great reward and blessing for those who possess a servant's heart. And for those who live to please God by serving others. That is why in verse 3 it says, In lowliness of mind, let each esteem other better than themselves. Without loneliness of mind, we are not going to esteem others better than ourselves. Amen. We are going to lift ourselves up. We are going to do things in order to, to uh, uh, make people applaud what we are doing. So we want to get the best. We want to be number one. We want to get the better or the best against anybody else. There was this uh, illustration or a story of a rich baker who sent for 20 of the poorest children in town and said to them, in this basket is a loaf of bread for each of you. So 20 loaves in one basket. Take one and come back every day and I will give you more. So immediately, the youngsters began quarreling about who would get the largest loaf because uh, uh, they, have di they are in different. They come in different sizes. So they they want to be first and get the biggest among the loaves that are available. So snatching from the basket, they left without even thanking the baker. But there is this one young lady or young girl. She was poor, but she did not get involved in the struggle, but patiently waited until the others had left. And then she then took the smallest loaf, because that will be what will remain, which remained in the basket, thanked the old man, and went home. So, 20 of them, they struggled to get the largest loaf, but this young girl just waited for them. And when they all finished, she just took the smallest loaf and went home. So the next day, they went back and the same thing happened again. But this time, when this uh, young girl went home and gave the loaf of bread to her mother, when her mother sliced that bread, there were silver coins inside. So what the girl did is gather the silver coin and went back to the baker and said, I think there was a mistake. There are silver coins inside the loaf, and I'm bringing it back to you. And then the baker said, no, it's not a mistake. It is a reward. Because you waited for the others, because you're patient, and because you showed humility. So there is a reward. If you are going to esteem others better than yourselves, there is a reward. If you are going to see to it that you may be last, but you are going to glorify God in your lives by being humble, by being a, a servant, by being last in your estimation. Listen, nothing in the church should be done to bring glory and praise to self. If you are in the church, you are not here so that you will be seen. You are not here so that you can show people how great you are. 
You are not here to parade your talent. You are not here to show your uh, house marked. You are in the church. We do things for one reason and one reason alone. And that is to glorify God. Why? Because we love Jesus. Why? Because we appreciate what he hath done in our lives. So Paul says, let nothing be done in vain glory. We should, we should have no vain opinions about our own abilities and talents. Listen, whatever we do, if we do it through self-esteem, wanting honor and praise of men, if we do it to attract attention and make ourselves uppermost in the church, then we are sinning. And there will be no reward for such stewardship. Amen. Because as a steward, we do things for the glory of the owner, for the glory of God. We should not exercise in, in empty self-praise and vain glory. So believers are to do everything for the glory of God. Amen. Why? Because he deserves all the honor and praise and glory that should be given to the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. You see, that is why whenever we are in the church, we never steal from Jesus. The glory only belongs to him. That is why, as much as possible, whenever we talk, the preachers, the deacons, whenever we have a meeting, we do not make any program that will steal the glory from the Lord Jesus Christ. There are so many things that are going on in many churches today that is lifting up the pastor, that is lifting up some of the members, that are lifting up those people who may have uh, something to do with the growth, the wealth, or the uh, uh, things that are being done in the church, and they are being put on the spotlight, stealing, stealing the glory from the Lord. Like, for example, Pastor Sunday. We do not do that. We do not have any program that celebrates the pastor. Why? Because we are here for the glory of God. We are here for the Lord Jesus Christ. When the Lord called you to become a pastor or to become a leader of the church, you did not say yes in order for you to be known. You said yes because you want to serve God. You said yes because you want to glorify God. You said yes because you surrender your life to the Lord Jesus Christ and you are going to live your life only to please the master. We are servants and we are not masters. We are servants and then our lives must be consumed in serving the Lord, serving other people and serving the lost that they may come to the saving knowledge of the Lord Jesus jesus christ that is why as much as possible there are many things that the world is celebrating like for example in america there is the veterans day and they also do that in the church well we need to thank the veterans there's nothing wrong with that but in the church it is about the lord in the church it is about the savior we may thank them we may mention them but we do not give that day to them because Sunday is the Lord's day and it belongs to God. It is not family day. It is not Father's day. It is not Mother's day. It is not any other day. It is not Pastor's day. It is not Sunday school's day. Sunday is the Lord's day and all glory must be given to God. And that is how we need to do it in the church. Why? All of us are servants of the Lord. And our lives must only be used in order to glorify God in our lives. You see, it is so sad to see what is happening to Christianity nowadays. If you spend time in, on Facebook, at least maybe 30 minutes an hour, or more than that every day, and if you have many Christian friends, especially pastors, in the Philippines, not only in the Philippines, but even in America or around the world, you will see that there are so many activities that are lifting up men inside the church. That is why no wonder that in the church in Revelation chapter 3, 
The Lord Jesus Christ was already outside the church and he's knocking at the door. He wanted to come in. Why? Because they have pushed him out because of all the programs, all the things that they're doing, which are not actually bad. But it does not concern the glory of God. So because of their so many activities, they have forgotten about the Lord. And that is what I'm afraid of. We have one Sunday, Pastor Sunday. Another Sunday, Pastor, Pastor's Wife's Sunday. And then uh, Mother's Day, Father's Day, Family Day, Friends Day. So many days. And maybe there is no more day for the Lord Jesus Christ. Because on those days, there are different things that are being lifted up. Ladies and gentlemen, it doesn't matter what day it is. On that Sunday, every preaching must be focused on the Lord Jesus Christ. Every preaching must be focused on the glory of God. And if we are not going to do that, then we are missing the mark of being a church. And we are missing the mark of being a servant. Whatever we do, it must only be for the glory of God. Amen? So today, let us consider some demeanor of a servant by looking at Philippians chapter 2. Number one, let's look at the attitude of unselfishness. You see, servanthood is about being unselfish. Amen? Because a selfish person will never be a good servant. Because a selfish person will always think of himself. But you will see in the concept, in biblical concept, the servant is only living for the pleasure of his master. He belongs to the master. He has renounced all rights, but has given everything to the master. And that is what the Apostle Paul is to the Lord Jesus Christ. And that is what the Lord Jesus Christ is to God, the Father. When he surrendered everything in order to do the will of his Father. So in verses 3 and 4, as we have read a while ago, we can see that the attitude of a servant is there is no contention or competition. It says, let nothing be done through strife or vain glory. You see, contention and competition will destroy the harmony and unity of a church. Amen? Imagine, in this church, how many are standing behind the pulpit? Myself, Brother Jeremiah, Brother Wilson, Brother uh, Alex, uh, Brother Gomer, Brother John, who else? Six of us are standing behind the pulpit. What if in our mind, we want to outdo each other? What if in our mind, we want to get followers or fan club so that you will say I am of Jeremiah I am of Wilson I am of Alex I am of Gomer I am of John I am of Pastor and then some of you I am of Christ then we are worse than the church at Corinth because at least they only have four, four personalities here we have seven and that is the perfect number, amen? Perfect number of vain glory. If we are going to do that. So, no contention or competition must be present in our church, but each of us must stand behind the pulpit, complimenting each other in glorifying and lifting up the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, amen? We stand here in order to preach the word of God. We stand here in order to glorify God. We stand here so that all of us can worship God better. We are not standing behind the pulpit in order to impress each and, and any of you. We have a different personality, but what's important is not the messenger. What is important is the message that we are giving, and that message must only come from the word of God. We have different styles. We have, like for example, Brother Gomer is uh, not too loud. And Brother Gomer usually is humorous when he's preaching. Brother Wilson is a very serious 
preacher. Brother Jeremiah is very exhaustive and deep. Sometimes we drown. Drown while he's a preaching. Brother John has a different style. Brother Alex is not perfect. <laughs> but he has a style of his own. But those are our personalities. But what's important is the message. And that message is about the Lord. It is about God. It is about the Word of God. It is about how each of us can serve God. Why? Because we are bought with a price. And in our body and our spirit, we need to glorify God. That is what we need to concern ourselves about. You see, in the life of a servant, in the attitude of a servant, there is no unselfishness. He is living, as I have said, to please God, and he is serving in order to receive the approval of God, not the applause of men. Why? Because when men applaud you, and you receive that applause, then it will only improve inflate your ego and time will come that you will think that the reason why something is growing something is being achieved is because of you not because of God anymore it happened in the life of David when he counted uh, when he numbered Israel and his pride came into the scene the ugly head of pride and he was chastised by the Lord so you see we are here to be servant in our lives there must be no comparisons there must be no contentions and there must be no competition look at 2 Timothy chapter 2 verse 24 look at what the Bible says and the servant of the Lord must not strive but be gentle unto all men up to teach patient you see, many times Christians attempt to outdo each other. To see which can be most important in the church and among pastors and even churches. That's why you see, in the Philippines sometimes it's like a circus. There is this church who will hold a missions conference and the other church will see to it that he will schedule his missions conference at the same date. And sometimes the missionaries and the pastors will attend this church in the morning and will attend the church the other uh, in the evening. And then what you will hear in the morning is that we have 350 missionaries and pastors present in our missions conference. And then this uh, uh, other church will announce, oh, we have more, we have 400 more than the other church. What is that? Why are we competing against each other? Why are they trying to outdo each other? You know why? Because they are doing things for themselves, not for the Lord. They are doing things to be known, not for the Lord Jesus Christ, to be lifted up. And then they will say, how much does that church support you? Oh, 200 pesos a month. <laughs> In our church, we support 1,000 pesos for every missionary. Why? Because we are generous compared to others. Why? We are not here to lift ourselves up. Amen? We are not here to brag. We are not here to put on a, a, an empty parade of lifting our self, our church, or even our group. You see, even the field... In the Philippines, we have uh, what you call the National Baptist Day. He, that National Baptist Day has been going on for quite a while. It was being done in different regions in the Philippines. But there was this congressman of a pastor in the Philippines who wanted to be known because he has an ambition, not only just to become a congressman, but maybe a senator or the, or the president of the Philippines. And then he as a uh, resolution for the recognition of the National Baptist Day. And there should be nothing wrong with that. Meaning to say the resolution. But I do not agree with the National Baptist Day because we do not have to lift ourselves up. It is about the Lord Jesus Christ. But the sad thing is this. What happened is that he is claiming to be the father of the National Baptist Day when 
even before that resolution, that event has been happening in many different parts of the Philippines. But it is about self. It is about who is better. It is about who is the best. It is about contention. It is about competition. That is why it is so sad that if a service of the Lord, if children of the Lord have no servant's heart, then we are going to serve ourselves and not the Lord and other people. Amen? Why? Because we are naturally self-centered. Oh, but pastor, I'm not a natural man. I'm already a Christian. Even if you're a Christian, the flesh is still here. And the flesh will try to insist itself. And that's the problem. That's why the Bible says that we need to be led by the Spirit. Because if we are not going to be led by the Spirit, we will not produce the fruit of the Spirit, but we will produce the fruit of the flesh. And those are sins that will never glorify God. You see, there are those in local assembly who even try to outgive others and make a show of their generosity. Sometimes when you give, you, if you're giving more, you try to see to it that people will see what you're giving. But don't you realize when you're giving less, you even try to crumple the money and try your best to hide it so that nobody will see it. But if you're going to give $100, maybe even if the asher is over there, you will already show that money. And then throw it up. And then it will glide inside the offering bag. You see, we try to do this. Why? For self-glory. Ladies and gentlemen, whatever we will do that will be seen by other people, so that we will be lifted up and glorified, we'll have no rewards in heaven. Because what the Father is going to reward in heaven are the things being done in secret in the name of the Lord. We are not here to parade. We are not here to show people how great we are. We are not here to show people that because of us, Things are being accomplished, ladies and gentlemen. Jesus already said, without me, you can do nothing. Nada. There is nothing that we can accomplish without the Lord Jesus Christ. So instead of competing with each other, let us help each other. Amen. Let us complement each other. Whatever I know, I will tell you. Whatever you know, you will tell me. We will tell them so that... Uh, we can help each other. We can sharpen iron by iron and by the grace of God. We can do more for the glory of the Lord. Why? Servants working together will definitely glorify God. Amen? You see, never did I think that I'm going to see a church giving rewards to members and pastors in the name of the pastor. There is a patriarch's night dedicated to the patriarch. I don't know, maybe the reason why he, he, he wanted to be called patriarch is because he's old. I don't know, I'm already old. But I'm not a fat riarch. I'm a thin riarch. And then there is this award that is named, uh, called the best friend, I believe, of the patriarch. And it's an honor to be his best friend. And that is one of the most coveted awards during that night and the person that will get that award will flaunt on it will will be very very proud that he was the best friend of the patriarch in that church and not only that yeah, best church best pastor 
you can be judged as the best pastor. And then, in that church also, they have the, uh, I do not know what they call it, but the Givers Award. Where they have the Millionaires Club. If you have a first person of more than one million, you are a part of the Millionaires Club. And you will receive uh, a plaque, I think with an eagle on it, that you belong to the elite. Because you give millions of pesos in first fruits offering. But they don't care about the soul winners. They don't care about the servants. They don't care about those that are you know, serving the Lord, that are not uh, even without any uh, uh, applause from men, without any pat on their back. They, they do not uh, recognize those people that are not in the spotlight. Why? Because they're just nothing for them. But it doesn't matter if you're a carnal. It doesn't matter if you're a drunkard. It doesn't matter if you're an adulterer. It doesn't matter if you're not uh, a regular attender. As long as you give millions of pesos, you belong to the elite. And that is what is happening in our churches today. Why? Because greed is the one that is controlling in a uh, the local church, and sad to say, when greed takes a hold of the leader, then they are going to milk the people for their own benefit. And that is what's happening. And then they have the audacity to stand up and say, among the churches here in the Philippines, which church can you say that have an elevator and an escalator at the same time? Only our church! If I was there, I would stand. I said, you may have the escalator, you may have the elevator, but we have the calculator. And what will that accomplish? Nothing. Contention. What? Vainglory. What? Competition. And not only that. You see, what is really saddening is that I do not know why we try to cover under these people of reputation. I do not know why. He will even preach in a church. I heard this so many times. And he will even insult the people of the church. And he will even insult the pastor of that church. And the pastor of that church will even say amen. And the members will even shout amen. Even though it is actually very painful in their heart. You see, among, for example, you're all pastors. And then he will stand behind the pulpit and he will say, Do you know why you're poor? Because you're not right with God. If you're right with God, then you should be rich like me. You should have a beautiful car. You should have a beautiful church. You should have a beautiful home. Why? Because we are serving the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Yes, we are serving the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, but His kingdom is not yet. But in the millennium, when we are there, that's the time that we will enjoy the blessing of God. Not here. He says, in this world ye shall have tribulation. This is a time to serve. This is a time to sacrifice. This is the time to forget, to deny yourself, to take up our cross, and to follow the Lord Jesus Christ. Then glory will follow. But they, they want to live in the millennium today. They want to, to enjoy the things that are reserved in heaven or in the kingdom but they want to enjoy it here that's why they're doing everything in order to get it but ladies and gentlemen as i have said if you will do these things for yourself then you already have your reward i remember two workers contracted a uh, to make a pulpit and then they said okay you make me a pulpit and i'll give you 
uh, 1,000 pesos or $20. And then these two workers start to work, but the other one is the one who is commanding. Okay, you get that wood. Then you will get the wood. Okay, you cut it. Okay, you try to uh, smoothen it. And then this is the measurement. And then you put the nail. And then you paint it. And then the other one is not saying anything. The other one is the one who is doing all the talking. But the other one is doing all the working. And then after the job is finished, they were given a... Uh, 1,000 pesos in uh, coins because uh, before money are usually in coins and then it was given to the one who did all the work and then the person said where's my part? Oh he said wait and he threw all the, uh, the coins up and when it hit the ground it made all the sound and then he took all the money how about my part? That's your part the sound because he did, did not do anything I am the one who did everything all you did was talk and the sound of the money belongs to you, and the money belongs to me. Amen? That is what we need to do when we are serving God. Disobey God! Do all things without murmurings and disputings. So, the attitude of a servant or the attitude of a selfishness has no contention or competition. But the servant, God approved, serves the Lord out of simple compassion for the Lord and concern for the Lord's work. Not only that, but there is no conceit in the servant's attitude. Amen? So the servant whom God approves realize that they must be in lowliness of mind. Let each other esteem other better than themselves. They do not serve with any thought of receiving recognition for what they do. You know, IBCSR was judged as a church who does not love their pastor. Do you know that? Maybe some of you may not know it. But so many people have said, the members of IBCSR, Cambodia, do not love their pastor. Do you know the reason? Because during my birthday, nobody gave me a gift. So you do not love me. Do you know why? Because in the Philippines, if it is the pastor's birthday, it will be the pastor's Sunday, and every member will give a gift, at least one gift. Every member. Aside from the gift of the church. Aside from the gift of the choir, and the Bible study groups, and the Bible students, and so many other people. And not only that, but now it's like this. If you turn 58, you will be given 58,000 pesos because you're 58. So it's good if you're 1,000 1, years old. You will receive 100,000 pesos from, from the church. That is what they are doing now. So because I was not given, actually I was given a gift then. It's a pair of slippers given to me by Brother Gomer. That's Adidas. Brother Gomer, do you remember that? Do you remember that, Brad? Good. <laughs> you see? I think that's the only gift that I receive during the day. But this is what they do not know. I always say to the church, do not give me gift. If you want, I will accept it. But I do not expect it. What I want you to do is pray for me. Because I believe, compared to gifts, prayer is greater than all the material gifts that you can give to a person. When every day, every night, when you go to God in prayer, you will say, Oh God, protect my pastor. Oh God, bless my pastor. Oh God, help my pastor. Keep him, Lord, from temptation. Keep him from sin. Make him a blessing to many people. Make him humble, oh God, that prayer is worth more than the material things of this world. That's what they do not know. And to the pastor, if you give more gifts, then you are more pleasing to him. Compared to other people who might want to give you more than what others have given, but they do not have the money to do it. So is it about material things now? Is it about money? Is it about 
recognition? Is it about being lifted up? Is it about being remembered? You see, verses in the Bible are being twisted. Remember them that have the rule over you. You know how it's interpreted? It is interpreted that if you have good food, remember your pastor and bring some of that food to him. If you receive a blessing, remember your pastor and share that blessing to him. If you receive your salary, remember your pastor and give some love gift to your pastor. That is how they interpret it. Salute them, but not the rule over you. And some, you may find this funny, but there are really people who are saluting the pastor. Like this. Especially at the Baptist Church in uh, Fort Bonifacio. They are saluting their pastor because it was said in the Bible. So maybe they're kissing each other in the church. Because greet one another with a kiss. According to Romans 16 and verse number 16. And then they said, touch not the anointed of the Lord. And the interpretation is this. You cannot question the pastor. You cannot correct the pastor. They said, there are two rules in this church. Number one, the pastor is always right. Number two, if the pastor is wrong, refer to number one. And that is what's happening. So people now are doing things in order to be recognized. Even members, when they did something and it was not announced behind the pulpit, they will say that these people do not recognize greatness. Ladies and gentlemen, we recognize only one greatness here in church. And that is the greatness of the Lord. Amen? It is not, not that there must be no conceit in our lives. We should not be self conceited. You see, listen to this. They do not serve with any thought of receiving recognition for what they do. The person who does things that count doesn't usually stop to count them. That is a, a good saying, right? The person who does things that count does not usually stop to count them. He will just keep on doing them even without any recognition Tap on the back. He will just serve the Lord. So servants, the, a servant God approves shows no self-conceit or self-importance, but shows true compassion for others. You see, some, some, uh, some uh, uh, servants of the Lord, if you will not shake their hands, or if you will not greet them, then you're going to be in trouble. You are going to be branded as rebellious or ungrateful why because so many people are doing the service in the lord or the church to be about them and not about the lord jesus christ but when we sincerely esteem others better than ourselves then we will be humble and if we are humble we are an asset to the church and we will show a wonderful testimony to the community where we belong. Not only that, but not self-seeking, but concern. You see, in verse number four, Paul says, look not every man on his own things, but every man also on the things of others. So if our church will make an impact in this area where we are planted, then there must be people here with a servant's heart that we will seek to serve and not to be served. That we will be concerned about the things of other people, not only about the things of ourselves, for it will only show selfishness, and if we are selfish, then we cannot be approved by God. If we are selfish, we cannot walk in the Spirit. If we cannot walk in the Spirit, we cannot bear the fruits of the Spirit. If we are self-seeking, and interested only in ourselves, then there is nothing that will be accomplished in the ministry that God has given unto us. So we must also look for others. Amen? Uh, I have a, a favorite illustration here when considering other people. Uh, it is about the uh, glory of the uh, Filipino people. <laughs> uh, there was this uh, ship who is about to capsize. So the captain said that we have to throw all of our properties uh, to the sea. 
so that we can stay afloat. So they did everything. It's an international sea vessel. They threw out everything, but still, uh, the ship is still, uh, still heavy, and they said that we need to throw three people out of the ship. And then when they heard that, immediately the uh, Japanese stood up and said, Bansai Japan! For others that they may live. And he jumped to the sea. And then afterwards, the uh, German, Heil Hitler! He said, that others may live. And then he jumped to the sea. But there is one more. But the Filipino and the Americans went to that place at the same time. But the Filipino shouted first. He said, Mabuhay ang Pilipinas! The others may live! And he pushed the American to the sea. Sometimes that is what is happening. We try to look at our needs or the things of ourselves, not the things of other people. A servant God approves realizes that there are others who need someone to care about them and share the love of Christ with them. Amen? So without that, you see, why do we have missionaries here? Because they care for other people. Why do we have Brother Matthew here and Sister Rebecca? Because they care for the LGBT community and the children of the community. Why are we here? Because we love the Cambodian people. But when we look at the things for ourselves, sometimes we forget why we are here. And the very people that we should be serving are the very people that we're using as our servants. Why? Because we're looking focused when we look at ourselves. So what is the basis for that unselfishness in verses 5 to 8? We can see here the command of the Lord. Paul uses our Savior as an example of humility. Amen? There is no, you cannot find a person more humble than the Lord Jesus Christ. More unselfish than the Lord Jesus Christ. And he exhorts us to let this mind be in you which was also in Christ Jesus. So Christ is the model for Christian life and service because he thought first of others, not of himself. He did not come for himself. He came here in this world for us. So the question is, do we look out for the interests of others or do we just look for our self, for our own interests? Do we have the servant attitude of Jesus Christ and that is willing to sacrifice for others? Are we willing to empty ourselves that others might be filled? Or are we going to use others so that we might be filled. Remember, Christ came to this earth to serve, to give, and to save us from our sins. As I've said a while ago, He did not come here to be ministered unto, but to minister and to give His life a ransom for many. All our Savior ever did was for others. Try to look at the life of the Lord Jesus Christ and find one thing that he did for himself. No, his hand worked for others. His feet went to others. His mouth spoken or sp uh, speak for other people. His mind think of other people. His body was sacrificed for others. It is about others. It is not about himself. And ladies and gentlemen, as a children, as children of God, then I believe that we should also live our lives for God and for others. Amen? Don't think about ourselves. God has already thought about it. He already reserved something for us. We are going to receive that reward one day, but let us serve Him while it is day, because the night will come that we cannot serve Him anymore. What is the character of the Lord? Verses 6 and 7. If you will just read this, you will already understand the character of the Lord. Who, being in the form of God, 
thought it not rather to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation, and took upon him the form of a servant, and was made in the likeness of men. Not only that he took, and not only that he made himself of no reputation, but he went a step downward when he uh, took upon him the form of a servant. Servant to whom? Servant to God the Father. All that Jesus did is to obey the Father and that is even unto the death of the cross because that is the desire of the Father. Was he selflessly trying to hold on to his privilege as God while he was here on earth? No. He made himself of no reputation. He was willing and laid aside his glory and put on the form of a servant. He did not cease to be God. But he lay aside his glory in the independent use of his attributes as God. As God man on earth, he was completely subjected to the Father. Look at John chapter 8, 29. The Bible says, And he that sent me is with me, the Father hath not left me, for I do always those things that please him. And as his children as his servants, then we must also do everything, always, that will please him. Amen? He humbled himself. And we as servants of the Lord Jesus Christ must also humble ourselves because he is our example. Self-entitlement should have no place in the heart of a Christian with a servant's heart. There must be a willingness to let go of our own perceived rights to rightly be a servant to God and our fellow men. This is one thing that is lacking in the Christian world today. We all want to be served. We all think that we are entitled to several things in our lives, to several things in this church. That is the reason why we have contention, we have fighting, we have misunderstanding. There is so many problems in the church it's because we think that we are self-entitled. You help people, help them, and then one time that you fail to help them, they're going to that, look at that failure and crucify you for getting all those things that happened before. Why? Because they will say, it is your privilege to help me, and I am entitled to that help. But now that you fail to help me, then you're a failure as far as I'm concerned. That's what's happening in our world today. You treat them kindly for 20 years. And if there is one day that you treated them badly, then all of those 20 years will be come to waste. It will be forgotten. But what will be remembered is the one day that you failed to help them. Can you see that in the life of the Lord Jesus Christ? He did nothing wrong. He said nothing wrong. But still, they tried to find something wrong. And because of that, they crucified him. While he, in humility, allowed all of these things because he knew what he's doing and why he is here. Ladies and gentlemen, do you want to receive what you deserve? Do you know what we deserve? That's what we deserve. But because of God's grace, He saved us. And because of His mercy, He did not give us what we deserve. Instead, He sent His Son to die for us so that we will live. And that is what we've been studying here. That is what we've been studying in the book of Hebrews. Imagine all the privileges. You say, oh, Abraham, great man of faith, right? Moses, uh, Joseph, Daniel, Enoch, name all of these people. And we said, these are great men of faith. And we admire them, not realizing that what has given us in the new covenant, in the new dispensation is far more better than what was promised to them. But they have given everything, including their lives, suffered for God during their time and we were given much more than that and we're not even willing to lift one finger up in order to glorify God in our lives and to suffer for God 
We're just a bunch of ungrateful people if we're like that. We do not care about what God did for us. We only think of ourselves. We just want to be happy. Even at the expense of other people, especially at the expense of God. Not only that, but the servant, we can see the condescension of the Lord Jesus Christ. Just imagine God, omnipotent, omniscient, omnipresent, from everlasting to everlasting, willingly taking such a place of humiliation when he emptied himself. Why? For you and for me. He did the will of the Father. Look at Hebrews 10, 7. Then said, I, lo, I come in the volume of the book. It is written of me to do thy will, O God. Now that we are his servant, as I've said a while ago, we should say the same thing. That what we are going to do is to do the will of God in our lives. Amen. That's why it is so sad to say that one of a prominent pastor said this literally. I am not here to serve the church. You are here to serve me. And you know what the people said? Amen. That's why I, in my mind only, forgive me Lord if I'm sinning, maybe more than half of the people in that church are not even saved. Because they could not discern what is true and what is false. You see, a mere pastor lifting himself up while the king of kings and the lord of lords took the place of a servant wore the garments of a servant and performed the most humiliating task the most humbling task that a servant could perform for his fellow man and yet a mere pastor a sinner saved by the grace of god called by god saying that you are here to serve me not me serving you that is vain glory. Amen? And that should be humiliating. But it is something to be proud of for them. Because they said they've earned it. And this is one of the saddest things that I can say. That I have heard this so many, many times in my life. That I believe it, at one time I said this. When I was in that condition that you need to do everything that I ask of you because don't you know that if not for me, you will not even go to heaven. So we own you because we spoke to you the word of God. So we should be unselfish, amen? Like the Lord Jesus Christ. Humble like the Lord Jesus Christ. Why? Because if we will be unselfish as a servant of God, then there are blessings or rewards in being a servant. Amen? Verses 14 to 16. Do all things without murmurings and disputings. Amen? That is a very good uh, policy. Uh, when you are serving, do not murmur, no disputing. That ye may be blameless and harmless, the sons of God, without rebuke, in the midst of a crooked and perverse nation, among whom ye shine as lights in the word holding forth the word of life that I may rejoice in the day of Christ, that I have not run in vain, neither labored in vain. Ladies and gentlemen, in verse 13, before that, there is a very, this is a very important verse where it says, For it is God which worketh in you both to will and to do of his good pleasure. Notice the word, for it is God which worketh in you. God's presence is always with us. Amen. And as we surrender ourselves to the will of God, He works in us to fulfill His way. Without surrender, without being a servant, God will not work in us. And His ways will not be fulfilled in us. 
So without His presence working in us, we will fail, we will fall, and we will lose focus. So that's why we need to recognize the power of God. Look at verse number 12. He says, Paul says, Work out, uh, wherefore my beloved, as you have always obeyed, not is my presence only, but now much more in my absence. Work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. So God is commanding us to work out our own salvation. But listen, even though he commanded us to work, we are not alone. Because in verse 13, he says, after he says, work out your own salvation, for it is God which worketh in you. So see, we work out our own salvation with fear and trembling. God is working in us in order to fulfill His good pleasure in our lives. So it is a cooperation. It is a, a work that we are doing and a work that God is doing and we can see a perfect blending of God's sovereignty and man's free will. That the only time that we are more free to choose is to choose to serve God. Because as we choose to serve God and surrender our will to Him, then God is working in us. So that He can accomplish but what He wants to accomplish in our life. And what is that? The pleasure of the Lord. And what is uh, that pleasure of, 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 of the Lord? Something that will make Him satisfied that he will delight in his purpose and his desire in our lives. So that is the reason why we need to do the will of God if we hope to satisfy God. Why do we have to do that? Because we belong to him. We were bought with a price, according to 1 Corinthians 6.19. Therefore, we must glorify God in our spirit, in our body, which belongs to God. So God's greatest desire is that we will be well-pleasing to Him. That is His desire. That's why He's molding us. To conform to the image of His Son. Because the Son is well-pleasing to the Lord. Remember, when He was baptized by John the Baptist, He says to whom I am well-pleased. And He's working in us, conforming us to the image of Jesus, so that we will also be pleasing in the sight of the Lord. And listen, we cannot do that if we are so wrapped up with ourselves. That we neglect to live for Him and we neglect to minister to others. You see, as a servant, we should be consecrated and not complaining. Do all things without murmurings and disputings. Just serve God with humility. Do not be, do not be a murmurer or complaining while you're serving God. Just serve God even under the radar, even without the spotlight. If you are a place by God behind the pulpit, do it with humility. Even if nobody is noticing you, do it for the Lord. If we will have an attitude that I'm doing this for God, then it doesn't matter if there are people or if there are no people. If you say that I'm preaching for God, it doesn't matter if many are listening or even if only one is listening. If we are doing things for the Lord, then we are not going to complain. We will just do things for the glory of God and we do not even care if they will recognize what we're doing. Why? Because God is not unrighteous to forget your works and labor of love and that, was, that is what matters how God look at us. And we must do this thing in a Christ-like manner, not in a corrupt way, or not in a corrupt manner, that we are doing this so that we will be seen, and that we ourselves will be the one to, glorify, to be glorified. And we need to continually doing this until we die, or until the, Lord's, the Lord comes. You see, we are living in a dark world. Amen? But we are the, but this Christ is the light of the world, and we are the children of God. So we are the light of this world. And therefore, we need to continue to hold that word of life so that people will see our good works and that they may glorify our Father which is in heaven. You see, as a summary, a servant God approves will possess the demeanor of a servant. And what is that demeanor? That is unselfishness. Listen, let each of us ask ourselves today, do I possess the demeanor of a servant? Am I unselfish? 
Are you unselfish? Our motives, are they, are they selfish or not selfish? Why are we doing what we're doing? Is it for self or is it for God and is it for others? Do I seek the recognition with, which belongs to the Lord alone? Do I try to steal the glory of God? Am I standing between the people and God so that they will not see God but they will see me? Am I doing this thing for myself or for him? Do I think of the needs of others ahead of my own desires? Let's end in Philippians 2.4. And let me emphasize this. Look not every man on his own things, but every man also on the things of others. Let us not look out for our own interests alone, but the interests of others rather than our own. So the question now is that, are you going to do that? Are we going to do that? Because if we will do that, then and only then can we be a servant that God will approve. Ladies and gentlemen, as I close, I hope and I pray that we will desire in our life is to have a servant's heart. Because if we will only desire to serve each other, imagine how beautiful a church we are going to have. Amen. When we look at the interests of other people, lift, esteem them higher than ourselves, what respect are we going to see in our church? What love are we going to feel in our church? And what glory can we give to the Lord? through our church. Let us have a servant's heart. Shall we stand up, please?